Hello there, I'm Sconchulus, and this is Teppin Quick Take, where we give a deck one shot and see what it do. Today we are playing a breakaway gimmick deck using the new card from Genma Onslaught, Master Mounter. And a quick disclaimer, this is not a meta deck. Every card in the deck is pretty much built around doing exactly one thing, so the deck's not really well-rounded and you won't always draw the combo. But with that out of the way, the deck is totally freaking cool, with the plan being to summon Hope of the Brood Ryu, turn one every game, since he's our only target for Mounter, then transform him into his accession dragon form, and from there, we are basically piloting a boss fight for our opponent, where this guy provides constant board control with his attacking effect, and constant lethal pressure whenever we play a unit. So to set that all in motion, we also play 3 Natalia Corda and 3 Lottie. Lottie is fine even without ascending them because the dragon will protect them, but Natalia is our best card to open with Mounter because she will heal our dragon while being extremely hard to deal with on her own. The really important thing about these units, other than transforming Ryu, is that they allow us to activate the wind, the last piece of our three card opening combo. Played right at 7 MP, a 310 Dragon Ryu and 2-7 Natalia, both with shield, is easily one of the strongest plays you can make that early in the game. Especially at exactly 7 MP, you know? Like, nobody expects the 7 MP all in combo. After our big flashy opening, this deck becomes extremely linear. Cornered Prey is our best card at this point to let our dragon get in free attacks and to heal with Natalia. Unforeseen Interference is to negate Disarms, and You Get Out of Here is basically the greed play, since Ryu's already so good at combat, but anything that makes him this much harder to kill is too good to not play. Letter for Lottie is just to find all these cards, but we do play enough actions to eventually get the memory effect. And with that being our entire combo, we do have a plan B for when our dragon eventually dies. We can recycle him one time with Reignited Malice and potentially play him for free with our breakaway. But the real plan B is to use Wild Resistance to set up breakaway into Fatalis. If you can get this set up before the initial Ryu dies, I would probably use the breakaway on Ryu so you can play him a second time. But any time that you can set up a 0 MP unreactable Fatalis will be devastating. And if that setup does not end the game, we can also summon either dragon from our EX at a discount with a buff using Red Dragon's Betrayal, as long as we have the lock set up. So you should save one of your luck cards. Getting to make Fatalis a 4-8 is crazy, but we also have the Arch Assassin from Strider, a card that can solo carry any purple deck, especially a deck like Breakaway that can recycle the card from multiple board wipes. Our one severance from the past is mostly here to bounce the Assassin and for Brainwashed. Maverick Hunter can maybe help end the game too, but once you're bouncing Arch Assassin, Anything else is just win more. And our last finisher is the dreaded Purple Owls, which we can use to buff our dragons, and in Breakaway, being able to repeat this card is always gonna be game winning. Here's the deck QR for you, and with all that said, let's do this. All right, this time we are up against a high rank Dancing Dead player. Hopefully, the element of surprise and early high roll will be able to defeat black removal. We draw our perfect three card opening combo of Master Mounter summoning Ryu into Natalia Corda and the Winds. This will let us get a 310 Dragon Ryu with two shields. Our opponent will tank one of those shields with a liquor, getting three damage in under the shield, and ascending Ganado to defeat our first Natalia. We can play a second Natalia and a second Winds because our luck is just crazy, and we defeat their Ganado. We will play down You Got 
you get out of here, and our opponent will use the one that got away to pull back their Ganado to the field, and we will use Time Distorted. Their Ganado will take 5 damage from the one attack cycle, and they will play Long Arm Ascending Orthrus to trigger Ganado defeating our second Natalia. We'll play down the third Natalia, and our opponent will play Neil Fisher, pulling Ganado back from the graveyard. Our opponent will send will ascend Seth over the Ganado, and we will play and we will ascend Lottie over our Natalia. Our opponent will play down a Liquor in the middle lane to get a bit of damage under Lottie's battle damage effect, and we will use Cornered Prey to stun their Liquor and defeat it with the damage effect. Our opponent will use the two that got away to pull back Ganado, and we will use Reignited Palace to pull a copy of the Winds back to our EX. We will unlock the lock from Cornered Prey, and our opponent will use Cooldown to defeat our Lottie. We will try to lock their Granado, but unfortunately the damage effect will not trigger since it does not lock anything at this moment. Our opponent will use the two that got away to pull Seth back to the field, and they will ascend Mutant Pedro over their Granado. We will play down our Owl, buffing up our Dragon form, but our opponent finally has their Dancing Dead online to defeat it. We have our Owl back in our EX and the one on the field to finally start putting on definite lethal pressure and when we play down the second owl our opponent can try to stop us using devil joe to ping the middle owl and they have two copies of cooldown for either of our other owls all they need to do is drop their hero art but it is too late and we have taken the game so should you play this deck no and it's not because you won't always draw the combo. That's always the bit with these episodes. The reason I don't think you should play this deck is that every game is going to be going exactly the same way if you do draw the combo. You're just really seeing how far you can push it and how many pieces of the combo you draw, which is fun to see if you can flip your Ryu into Fatalis or pull off Red Dragon's Betrayal. Stuff like that is really fun, but it's always gonna be what you're trying to do. There's no real thought process or reaction to what your opponent is doing. If you have the cards already, it's worth a try if you think it's funny like I did, but I wouldn't recommend you craft this deck. It's too expensive and it's not good. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. The next video will be something a little more playable on Ranked Ladder. It'll be another kind of love letter to Dragons of War, since this one was all about the two purple legendaries. The next one will be all about green, so keep an eye out for that. Please like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you subscribed. Once again, I'm Sconchulus, and I'll see you in the next one.